Today we're going to learn how to make a textured candy cane bracelet. Now, the base of this bracelet is made with DNA spiral stitch, which you're probably already familiar with. But in this bracelet, we're going to modify the DNA spiral stitch by adding these little drop beads, which are going to add a ridge and give the bracelet a chunkier, more elaborate look. This bracelet is made with a lobster claw clasp and an extender chain for easy adjustment. But if you're making the bracelet for yourself, or if you know the wrist size of the recipient, you could easily use a different clasp. A chunky toggle might be neat. This bracelet has cones at the ends and requires a little bit of wire wrapping in order to get the beadwork up into them. I prefer using the bead cones instead of a bead cap because I like to cover the unsightly ends of my bracelet and I think it gives it a more finished look. I'm going to go over the materials and tools used in this project, but don't worry about scrambling to write them down as I will post them on the screen to give you the time that you need. The beads that you're going to need are two size 11 seed beads. The ones I'm using are Miyuki Japanese seed beads. I like them because they're very uniform in color and size and shape. Toho is another brand that I use for the same reason. You're also going to need 3.4 millimeter Miyuki drop beads. There's a little close up. They have a teardrop shape with a hole across the pointy end, like little pairs with a top drill. Here's another color in case you couldn't see the first. Next, you're going to need one six millimeter Swarovski crystal bicone. I chose mine in the color emerald to match my base beads. And that bead is gonna dangle off the bottom of your extender chain, just like that. The findings you're gonna need are one 22 gauge two inch head pin for your dangle. and two of the same 22 gauge two inch head pins for your wire wrapping that you're gonna end up cutting the nub off later. One lobster claw clasp. Mine is 12 millimeter long, but you might prefer something larger or smaller depending on your taste. about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half of serviceable extender chain. Mine is a curb chain. And make sure that the links in your chain are large enough to accept your lobster claw. And you're going to need a pair of bead cones. In order to fit your bracelet ends, you want the openings of your cones to be six or seven millimeter and as tall as you like depending on your preference. Mine are about eight millimeter tall and that's about the same size as the ones I used in the original bracelet. Optionally at the top of your cone you can have a three millimeter metal ball. You could also add a three or four millimeter Swarovski crystal or another accent bead, but I'm opting not to with my bracelet as I chose a very ornamental cone.
The tools that you're going to need for this project, beginning with the tools that you'll use for the beadwork portion of this project are Fireline 8 pound. You could probably also use 6 pound, but I like as much structure as possible. A size 10 beading needle. I prefer John James, but tulip or pony are fine too. And scissors to cut your fire line. Once you get to the wire wrapping section, you're also going to need round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and a wire cutter. Let's get started! You're going to start by threading about six feet of thread under your needle. You're going to be working with a single thickness. Now string six of what will be your main color or base bead. And slide them down to within a few inches of your thread. With your tail thread pointing down and your working thread pointing up, continue up through the six beads that you just strung. As you get down close to the beads, grasp both your tail thread and your working thread and snug them up into a loop. Tie a double overhand knot and give it a tug for security. With your threads facing down, start where your thread is coming out and go up through two beads on the loop. Snug up your thread and pull that knot up into the beads. You should feel it snick when it happens. Next, you're going to string two more of your base color beads. And then three of your accent color beads. And slide them down to your work. Go up through just the two beads on your starter row that you just came out of and continue up through the two based beads that you just strung. So that's four beads total. And once you get up through those four base beads, you start snugging up your thread. This should create a loop out of your accent color beads. And you're going to move those accent beads over to the left. Now you're going to add one base bead. And three accent color beads. Slide them down to your work. And including the base bead that you just strung, continue up through the last four base color beads, avoiding your accent color beads. And that's going to form a loop of the accent beads again. And you're going to move the accent bead loop over to the left side beside the first one. These rows are going to mostly snug up into your cone finding at the end. Now to begin the actual pattern, you're going to pick up one main color bead, one accent color bead, a drop bead, and one accent color bead. Slide them down to your work and including the main color bead that you just strung, continue up through four beads on the base row. Now 
Move your bead loop over to the left to sit beside the others, exposing the base row. And again, you're going to pick up one main color bead, one accent, one drop, and one accent, and slide them down to your work. And including the base color bead that you just strung, go up through four of your base beads. Move your loop over to the left. The next row, you're going to pick up your main color bead, one accent color bead, a drop, and an accent. Slide them down to your work, and including the main color bead just strung, continue up through four beads on the base row. Move your bead loop over to the left to sit beside the others, exposing the base row. You're starting to get a little bit of a ridge and even a little bit of something to hold on to. Continue on in this manner until you've reached approximately an inch shy of your intended length. Once you have the length that you desire, you're going to end out your beadwork by adding the two rows of just the main and accent color beads with no drops, just like you did at the beginning. So you're going to add one main color and three accent color beads. Slide them down to your work and continue up the same four beads on the base row. Snug up and move that loop to the left. Repeat one more time, adding the one main color bead and three accent color beads and continue up those same four beads in the base row that you have been. And now we need to end off with a loop just like we did on the other end. So you're going to add four of your base color beads and slide them down to your work and only go through two of your base row beads, the top two base row beads to form a loop. You want to go through all of the beads that you just added to reinforce the loop at least one more time and another if you desire. I prefer to reinforce at least twice. Next you're going to weave down into your beadwork and tie off at least twice before cutting off. If you're having trouble tying off in the base row, you can always tie into the loops with the drop beads on them. Remember to leave yourself a tail. Clip the thread on this end and the thread on the opposite end of the bracelet if you haven't already. Now 
Now you're going to begin the clasp portion of the bracelet and you'll start by taking your bicone and adding it to one of the head pins. And then we're going to do the beginning of a wrapped loop. Just start the loop portion, don't wrap it yet. Open out your loop and add your chain to the end and slide it down into the loop. Finish the wrap. And clip. Then, if you need to, you can push your end in. Just like that. Next, take one of your other head pins and clip the nub off of the bottom so that it's just a little piece of wire. Could you use a two or three inch piece of wire in place of a head pin? Of course you could, it's a matter of personal preference. Going down about a half to three quarter inch from the end, begin your loop. Now you're gonna open out your loop to accept the bracelet end. Add one of your bracelet ends, slide it down into the loop, and avoiding crushing the seed beads, you're gonna wrap your loop. Clip and snug in your end if you need to. Mine was so short that I didn't need to. It seems to be giving me a little bit of trouble. Once that's attached, you're gonna add one of your cones and make sure that it's all the way down to your wrap. Sometimes you have to tug it a little bit. This is the point at which you would add your optional bead or crystal before beginning your wrapped wire loop on top of the cone. But we're gonna go ahead and start with a wrap. Just the loop portion. Then you're gonna open out your loop and attach the free end of your extender chain, sliding that all the way down into the loop. And then you're going to wrap that loop. clip and push in your end. Then you're going to come over to the second side of your bracelet, pick up your last head pin and clip off the nub. Place your round nose pliers a half inch to a three quarter inch down from one end 
Begin your loop. and open out your loop to accept the bracelet end. Mine needed to be opened out a little bit more. Then avoiding crushing the seed beads, you're going to wrap your loop. Clip and snug in your end. Once that is attached, you're going to add your second cone and make sure that it's all the way down to your wrap. Again, this is the point at which you would add your optional beater crystal before beginning your wrap loop on the top of the cone. Start your wrap. Open out that loop, attach your lobster claw, and wrap your loop. your end and snug in your wire. And that's it. You're done.